Are we going to destroy Cortana? How are the challenges going to work out? Where are these extra little circular pads around the customization screen of the Spartans? What's the reason for those? And also what's going to happen for the next 10 years of Halo Infinite? Well, in this video, I'm going to answer all of your burning questions. So stay tuned throughout the whole thing to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again. Today we're doing another video where we're answering the questions from the community about Halo Infinite. I recently went on my community page here asking what your questions on the dev update that we recently had or just Halo questions in general. Now we had over 90 comments and 100 likes on this post guys so I'm not gonna be able to get to every question but usually we break this up into multiple videos so keep an eye out for the next episode as I will be sifting through more of the questions on here. If you want to take part of the next Q&A make sure you subscribe to the channel to know when these community posts go live so you can part participate in the next video. So let's jump right into it. Angry Bird Dude asks, do you guys believe that we would save Cortana or destroy her? This kind of goes into what happened in Halo 5 as she's basically becoming what's been kind of jokingly known within the community as Space Hitler. Basically just, you know, join us or die pretty much. And, you know, there's definitely ways around it. You can definitely tell, at least throughout the storyline of Halo 5, that Cortana legitimately has feelings and emotions that would make her want to have sympathy to humans, and especially the UNSC and especially Master Chief. It seems like there will be some way to have some kind of reasoning with her, because she doesn't feel like she's just like black or white, everyone's, you know, dead or join us. Uh, she seems to have some form of connection with them that to be able to reason with her and convince her to be on your side. Now, Joseph Stain in the recent development update did mention that he played through the campaign twice and he was honestly like blown away at what 343 was able to accomplish, but I think he was more referring to the scope and scale of what the game has to offer and maybe not necessarily the story, but I mean, if Joseph Stain, who's like that guy who created the Halo universe and lore, likes what 343 did, I think the story has to play some part of that as well, which would mean that, you know, they did something right. Now, whether or not we would save her or destroy her, that kind of depends on how they want to develop the story moving forward when it comes to Halo, just in general. Are we going to rethink everything and kind of go the Mass Effect route, where if you decide for characters to die, or you decide for characters to live, or make some kind of decisions, how would they play out in future games or future playthroughs of extra campaigns, which we'll get into later with the 10-year plan. So I don't think there's going to be any decision on the player's side whether or not Cortana lives or dies if she's even in the game. We don't even know. We only know that she has a chip and she we've heard her voice, so we're assuming she's in the game, but what capacity, we're not fully sure. Personally, I believe that we would save Cortana, convince her of her wrongdoings, and maybe just, you know, reprogram her, reboot her, or some, you know, you know, unplug the router, plug it back in, or something got to reset her properly or something. I don't know exactly. Some space magic, I'm sure, would happen. I think for a game that, you know, 3 for 3 I feel like it's trying to play rather safe when it comes to trying to please the fan base. I think destroying Cortana would be too bold of a move to make for a reset of the Halo franchise as a whole. I think we'd want to bring her back, you know, try to get back those CE through the Halo 3 feels, which this game is trying to re really pull a lot of influence from that original trilogy, that I think we'd most likely save her rather than destroy her. But, you know, it's up to the developers and the story writers about how exactly they want to go about doing that. Either we'll have like a sorrowful kind of goodbye like we had in Halo 4, or we have a return to form, bring her back along as your sidekick. Again, again, there's multiple ways to go about doing it. There's multiple right ways of going about doing this too, but uh, I think we're going to save Cortana most likely. Jose Francisco asks, Q&A, do you think that Halo will have challenges that involve things from the campaign or firefight if the mode is present? Or will they focus on challenges for multiplayer? I feel that right now, since the MCC does have challenges tied to the campaign, Halo Reach had challenges tied to the campaign as well back in the day, I would assume we have the same thing for the challenge system within Halo Infinite. And I think it's pretty promising to know that because of this one quote within the recent development update saying, players will obtain tons of customization content through things like playing campaign, challenges, skill, special events, legacy rewards such as earning 152, the progression system, and more. So they do make this distinction between challenges and campaign, but since the challenges are coming back, and I would really feel like they want to try to utilize campaign more within this game, give it much more replayability, which would provide challenges to do just that. And since we have that with the MCC right now, I would really believe that they would try to, you know, support that PVE community within Halo to make it so then, you know, playing the challenge, earning challenges within the campaign 
would make sense. Aether Chase asks, in the Halo Infinite in-game screenshots, the Spartans are standing on some type of circle pad. Next to the Spartan, there are other circle pads. Could that be hinting at towards playable elites or brutes? I think suggesting that playable brutes or elites would be because of these extra pads that we see in the screenshots right here. I think that's a bit of a stretch, though I do feel like this would be some kind of screen that you would see within the game. He's thinking that maybe if this is the customization page that you, you know, pan over to the right, you have your elite, pan over again, you might have your brute. This also maybe could be like an in-game version of the pre-game lobby screen, like kind of like what we had back in Halo Reach back in the day, where you're able to view you know, your Spartan and other Spartans within the game menu. I have a feeling that if you probably click on like select or some kind of button, it'll open up the screen of showing all the other players in the lobby. And this would have a much more interactive visual presentation of who you're playing against, rather than just having a name and a rank. Or maybe you'd be able to save multiple versions of your Spartan, depending on what kind of game mode or what kind of Spartan you want to utilize. So that like you can make A, B, and C different Spartans, and that whichever A, B, and C you want can be your primary Spartan. You can maybe save your settings of a different Spartan, just so then you don't have to re-customize everything all over again. You go, oh, you know, I want to switch back to my B Spartan, or I want to be my C Spartan now. Since there is going to be so much extra customization within Halo Infinite, I brought, broke this down in a previous video as well, showing out different armor sets and the armor coatings and things like that. I think it'd be awesome to have pre-saved sets of Spartans that you can customize yourself, so then you don't have to start from the beginning all over again when you want to have a different looking Spartan. You can maybe save you know, three or four different versions of your Spartan, and whichever one you select as your primary one is the one that's represented in game. I'm just saying three for three, I got ideas. You know, I got, I got a big old gamer brain right here. I'm just using it. El Elyon asks Q&A, what weapons that we have not already seen would you like to see in Halo Infinite? I did make a top five video of my favorite weapons I would like to see come back in Halo Infinite way back in May. So if you missed that video, definitely check out the link in the description down below or just check out the channel guys. You'll definitely be able to find it. In that video, I talked about wanting to see the Brute Shot come back. I wanted to see the Sticky Dead, the Flamethrower, as well as the Focus Rifle coming back as well. Now we have seen the Focus Rifle in some of the Mega Constructs games. So I'm assuming we already see that one come back because there is going to be a strong influence of Halo Reach coming in with Halo Infinite. There seems to be some kind of ties right there. Again, I haven't finished Shadows of Reach, so I'm still trying to work through that. But having the Brute Shot come back would be really freaking awesome. And plus, you know, we're playing against Brutes again, so that would be a weapon we would see. I would love to see the Sticky Detonator come back because it's such a unique weapon within Halo Sandbox. There's so many different things you can do with it. To only have its appearance in Halo 4 seems to be a bit of a shame. And I would like to see it come back with maybe some different kind of mechanics to add on to it. I don't know, maybe. I talked about the flamethrower coming back because I'm really sure that we'll be playing against the Flood. And if we're playing against the Flood, you know, flamethrower works really well. I guess especially against those little popcorn floods, it does work a really great job against us. And plus, with the enhanced graphics and visual fidelity of Halo Infinite, that this will definitely be the best looking flamethrower no matter what they do with it. Because a fire effect is so difficult to pull off within video games to make it look realistic without being so intensive on the game itself that, you know, being able to do things like fire and things like other kind of lighting effects and particle effects like that within the new engine would really be a spectacle to watch. Talked about the saw coming back because I just thought it's a badass weapon. It's unique in its sandbox element because it's like the only LMG we've ever had within Halo. And it's just really fun and badass to use. And so that's why I would really like to use it. And it ended off with the focus rifle. Like I mentioned, we've already seen it within the toy leaks. Uh, though I did mention, I would like to see it tweaked more as maybe a counter to the Spartan laser, as maybe have it be much more of a focus of a vehicle, kind of uh, anti-vehicle weapon, rather than an anti-infantry weapon, because uh, its usage in Halo Reach wasn't very, well, useful to say the least. Uh, though I would like to see it maybe as like a Covenant version of like a Spartan laser because I don't think there really is much in the way of anti-vehicle weapons within the Covenant side of things. Flat Rock 017 John asks, 343 imagine they have a 10 year plan for Halo Infinite. What do you think will happen with Halo Infinite for the next 10 years? And we've definitely heard this 10 year plan before from Destiny and it kind of was a little rocky. It didn't go exactly well as planned, but as we progress forward, they do see they're trying to follow up with that idea of Destiny. Now, I do believe that using Halo Infinite as a platform moving forward as the next 10 years for Halo, I think is the right way to go about doing this because what they really tried utilizing is the slip space engine. They broke down the engine back to its base roots and built it back up to have it work better for content creation and upgrades. But right now I would suspect probably a full-blown campaign about every two years or so, probably new maps being dropped in every season, maybe a, 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 with every new season, you probably see one, maybe two new maps added into the game occasionally. With the rumored and almost 
pretty much confirmed battle pass in Halo Infinite. See, a new season, get a new battle pass, a new customization option. So like every four months or so, get a whole new suite of customization, maybe new weapons, maybe new maps and things like that. Just drop it in with Halo Infinite. So there's always gonna be something to talk about. So we're gonna be very busy on this channel moving forward with Halo Infinite. And then with the year long plan, maybe like one big content drop every year, kind of like what we see with Destiny about every year, they have a new expansion or something like that that really kind of expands the gameplay or something like that. That would be awesome. Or if they don't want to do that route, maybe every two years release like a full blown campaign on Halo Infinite that would be free for people to play. Or maybe a, an additional campaign DLC cost. It depends how they decide to integrate the campaign along with multiplayer and everything, because it seems like they're really trying to unify the gameplay experience in Halo Infinite that no matter what you're doing, you're progressing towards something and they're valuing your time grand scale of things saying like five ten years down the road i would highly suspect to see maybe like some kind of upgrades of the slip space engine and graphical quality coming into the game later on as well maybe like five years in you get like a graphical texture upgrade for halo infinite maybe 10 years down the line or eight years down the line from now you see another like visual upgrade because they you know with the recent leak from clover will say that nothing in halo infinite is absolute and so they're really lending themselves with this new slip space engine to kind of carry halo and for the next 10 years and if there's upgrades that are needed to be happen they can be done within a reasonable amount of time we do know that they can patch in better visuals they did state when initially that the, the rtx update was going to come post launch which would be a huge graphical improvement for halo infinite but updating things like texture lighting and just different kind of visibility within the game can happen and most likely will happen so whatever game we get on launch day of 2021, it's not probably going to look the same in 2031. How different, how unique will it look? It's all kind of dependent on community feedback and what people want. And that's what really 343's big drive is with this game. So they want to bring in the community along with the development of this. Let me know in the comment section down below. Do you guys have any extra questions or have anything you want to talk about when it comes to the topics we mentioned in the video? Make sure to tap subscribe, guys. Keep yourself up to date with everything going on with Halo. If you missed any content from me recently, check out the videos on the screen over here. I got a link to all my news and informational videos. You've been on the loop for the last few days or so. Thank you so much for watching. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.